Hi and welcome to the Spiritual Awakener podcast. I'm Susan Kennard and I get the opportunity and the honour to interview many people on my podcast show. Mm. It's all about spiritual awakening. It's all about remembering that part of you that is soul having a human experience. And you know, we've all had turning points. We've all had moments in our life where we look back and we say, wow, at that time, it felt like something really, really difficult. However, it turns into the most incredible blessing in our life, which allows us then to help others to heal themselves, to remember who they are, and to find their true calling in life. So my next guest, um, I love her. We've been talking just before uh, we started recording this podcast. And I was really honored to be invited to be on her series, which was the Wealthy Women series. Mm -hmm. And that was a beautiful experience of meeting her and actually um, contributing to her show. But her name is Marlene Lee Butler. Excuse that sound outside. We're just going to honor that sound uh, being there for whatever reason. But Marlene <laughs> Lee Butler, thank you so much for being here on the Spiritual Awakener podcast. It's great to have you on my show. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me, Susan. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Mm, it was really, I just was so pleased that you accepted. And we obviously spoke about this a long time ago, but yes. in the meantime, lots of things have happened in your life. Um, so we rescheduled and this is yes. the perfect time, which is the 30th of August, 2022. Mm. So if you're listening to this, um, you know, in the now moment or listen to this later, you'll know where we are at this part in our lives. So Marlene, tell us a little bit about you and why you feel that your spiritual awakening is significant <laughs> for you and the world. Yes. Yeah, so, so big. And thank you for creating this platform for people to share like myself, because I feel for me, the most help I've ever received, support I've ever received in my life hasn't been from um, experts or therapists. And I'm not dismissing those, those you know, career paths because they're brilliant. And I learned the most, received the most and got the most out of people that shared their stories of yeah. their awakenings or where they were. And, you know, I think my first awakening was right after I decided I had struggled with bulimia for over a decade in my life, um, multiple array of eating disorders. And I quite honestly thought, this is probably how I'm going to die. Um, I had a premonition that if I didn't, it was almost like I saw the, the road splitting and I had yeah. two choices. Mm -hmm. you know, to either get healthy, get better, or to keep going down that path. And I would have ended my life a lot sooner. Um, and I wouldn't be here. And obviously so I'm feel, here. Do you feel, do you feel <laughs> that that is almost like, cause I often find that those are sort of like doorways. So we, yeah. you know, we, uh, that's just how I feel, but that we have many different doorways or exit yeah. points. Sometimes people call them. And do you think yeah. that could have been, well, it's all free will, isn't it? So that could have been your, one of your exit points. I believe so. And I believe that we have, you know, we're multidimensional beings. I believe that there's, you know, several realities that I'm, an ex I'm existing in. And perhaps the one reality that exists is one where I, you know, died from that eating disorder and yeah. wasn't able to overcome that. You know, yeah. I truly believe that that was, and and is something that likely occurred mm -hmm. for sure. yeah and it's a grass a great way to look at it so if you're you know if you're listening to this and you might have something similar or there's something going on with you and you feel out of control mm -hmm. with it you know maybe think that maybe this is your chance in this lifetime in this timeline we could call it that yeah. you can shift that consciousness and you can say actually i'm not going to repeat this pattern you know yeah. actually i am this incredible light so yeah, carry on. Tell us about your Yeah, so that was a really powerful moment where I had this, you know, sliding door moment or mm. um, split in the road moment. And 
really what was holding me back from choosing the health and myself, really choosing me, right? Mm-hmm. Saying I'm worthy of living this life um, fully and really appreciating myself and loving myself and adoring myself and nourishing myself. And what was holding me back was I was blaming other people, particularly my mother Mm. for having this eating disorder. You're doing this to me. Mm. And so it was holding me hostage in my life. And the moment I chose me and I said, you know what? Life isn't working. I'm not enjoying life. I am willing to do whatever it takes to get better because I don't like my life right now. And the moment I chose that, it was like- Responsibility. Responsibility, yeah. Like ownership of of life. Mm -hmm. It was like the universe just opened up Mm -hmm. and I had this massive awakening. And I actually had this white light experience where I'd gone to bed that night. I chose, I was like, I'm choosing me. I was living in Manhattan at the time walking around the Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis Reservoir. And I was like, I'm doing this. I'm choosing me. I went to bed that night and I had this dream. And it basically was like this fireplace was in my apartment and I didn't have a fireplace in my apartment. I lived in Manhattan. There was no fireplace. (laughs) And the water was just rushing in my apartment, like a cleansing was happening. And I have chills as I'm saying it. And God, like there was this light that came in and God was just like, I will lift all of these obsessions that you have addictions, if you will, Mm. if you turn your life over to be of service to others forevermore. Wow. Wow. I mean, that's actually just take a second for that because everyone listening to this, right? So just, just take a second for that Mm. because it's actually quite an emotive thing yeah isn't it to access again in that moment and i think that yeah how incredible yeah what a what an awakening that was <laughs> yeah yeah it's huge Gosh. huge and i was jolted out of bed and i got on my hands and knees for the first time in I was raised Catholic, you know, so first time Mm. ever that I got down and prayed, but actually like meant it it. (laughs) it. (laughs) rather than being told that's what you have to do at this time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not those like, you know, oh, please God, I'll be a good girl. Give me the candy. You know, like I really meant it. And I was like, I'll do it. And I, and, you know, I remember I called different centers and ask them for help around my eating disorder. And they're like, how old are you? And I'm like 28. They're like, good luck. You likely aren't going to overcome this if you've been doing it for that long. And I'm just wow. yeah. like, people had lost hope in me. I had gone mm. through therapists and all this. Yeah. And that was 10 years ago now, nearly 10 mm. years ago mm. and haven't, you know, and my life has been forever changed. It's it's kind of wild because the people that knew me prior to that mm. are blown away at who I be now. And the people that I know now that didn't know me back then, Can't when I tell it. these stories, they cannot fathom that that was who I was. So can I can I just take you back to that moment? So you had that yeah. you had that incredible awakening that happened that woke you up in the night, and you yeah. then it basically said, "Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do this." Okay. Yeah. I'm going to be of service. What was the next step after that? And Cause I think next... people are going to listen to this and say, well, I'm going through that and I haven't yeah. had that awakening yet. Maybe yeah. after this, but I haven't had that awakening. What did she experience? How did she know that she stopped doing that or she stopped treating her body that way? Yeah. And you know what? That's such a great question because what I did moving forward was I acted as if it was lifted. I said, okay, it's gone, lifted. So who do I be in this moment? I'm no longer that person. And I get to meet God, universe, divine source, spirit, whoever your higher power is that you Mm. resonate with. I get to meet that halfway. And so that entails me acting as if it's already lifted. It's already gone. I'm no longer that person. This is my opportunity. 
And so therefore it was like, I looked around at my small studio apartment and like nothing changed, but everything changed. And you hear Mm -hmm. that saying so often, but it really is true. Mm -hmm. And there was food in my house that I knew I'd binge on, got rid of it. There were different clothes that I knew would be triggering because I'd want to lose weight to get into them, got rid of it. And I just made it so that I had those parameters set up so that I was set up to win. You know, I always use the analogy if, and I don't know what it's like in the UK, but in, in the States and in New Zealand, they call it 10 pin bowling in the States. They just call it bowling. Yeah. It's just um, called bowling here. Although sometimes bowling. they call it 10 pin bowling. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So when you, when you're a young kid, they put the little bumpers in those gutters mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that you always hit strikes. Yeah. And prior to that moment in my life, I was just getting gutter balls because I wasn't setting myself up to win. I was Mm. haphazardly moving through life. And therefore, of course, that pattern was repeating. And after that moment, I set, I set up those bumpers. I set it up so that it was easy for me to win. It was easy for me to stay out of those addictions. Mm. And it was easy for me to love on myself. And, and I'd like to say the end everything got better from that moment on. And I really thought, well, that was the hardest thing I've ever had to overcome. So I will never experience anything anything harder, harder. anything harder. That was it. That was the big test. Now it's just smooth sailing. And that wasn't the case in my life might be for other people, but it wasn't. But I will tell you the next moment that I'll go into where I had my next really big awakening Mm. and that blew me open, what wouldn't be possible if I hadn't gone through all of those things prior. Yeah. Let's just take a breath from them. So I know where you're going with this, but yeah. So if you're listening to this and you're feeling that you've tried everything, um, as you know, you know, I'm, my background is trauma specialist in drugs and alcohol and addiction. And, you yeah. know, that's my background in the old days. Yeah. Um, and there is always a light, <laughs> literally, at the end of the tunnel. But if you're yeah. listening to this and you feel like there's no services for you, wherever you are in the world, there's no services for you. There is a service that mm. is so much more helpful than any services outside of you. And that service is within, that Mm. healer within. So I just want to invite you, if you're listening to this and you felt drawn, my intention of this podcast at the start was, before we started recording, was for this to reach those that really need to hear this message. So Mm. if you're listening to this, then you need to hear this message. Yeah. Yeah. And your soul is calling you to listen to this message. And Mm -hmm. it is time maybe for you to bring Awaken the Light, literally, the title of my book, Awaken the Light Within Your Heart, but it is literally time to awaken the light within your heart Mm -hmm. and realize that you are this incredible being of light and that this was just then. It doesn't mean it has to define the whole of your life from now on. That isn't you. That is just something that is happening right now. And as Marlene said, I am acting as if because she knew that there was a higher power within her. Yeah. And without her, <laughs> but within her, um, that was really supporting her. So please know that you have that support and that you can reach out to me, definitely, and to Marlene. Yeah. So um, okay, so then we move on, um, Marlene, to you know, another incredible spiritual awakening. Yeah. Yeah. And I, so that, from that experience, I really started to seek and, you know, when you seek what you seek, seeks you as well. Mm -hmm. And I met the right, the people, the places, Mm -hmm. the resources, the tools um, to, to support me, you know, and, and everything just kept helping me because I set up those bumpers, if you will, I, it really started to, there was a snowball and a momentum. And then the next thing I knew, I looked around and I had a community of people that were supporting this new lifestyle I had chosen. No longer did I have anyone in my life 
that was not supportive of this new lifestyle, this healthy lifestyle, this expansive being that I had become. And then it was like, I'll, I'll never forget. I was walking to my then job. Like, I don't like this job, but God is my employer. The universe is my employer. I'll be redirected. I'll be read. That was my mantra. I really I'll like that. That's so beautiful. <laughs> God is my employer. I like that. I yeah, love right? that. <laughs> I'm and just so going to write that as a like, note. <clears throat> God is my employer. God is my employer. Because I really didn't like my job, you know, I, and, mm-hmm. I, and I know it will happen for a lot of the viewers listening in that moment you wake up and you're like, wait, I want to change my life. You might not like some of the environmental things that are going on, mm-hmm. but it doesn't mean you go and quit your job tomorrow because that might. No, I agree. Stress. I totally agree. Yeah. Man. It's really, yeah. really key that you said that yeah. because I'm yeah. never an advocate of somebody doing that. I think the, the seed gets sown in that moment yeah. and then you maybe do a little volunteering or you, you know, or you start to do, you know, a course in the evening or you start to, you know, really find that part within you that is moving forward, but you never give up your job. Yeah, no. And, and I was like, and, and I had great mentors at the time too, that were like, do not quit. And at the time I started volunteering at a life coaching company, Uh, right. And surrounding myself. And I was walking to my then job And the owner of that company called me and was like, Hey, Melaine. And I said, Hey, and he said, uh, we want to hire you. And I just laughed because I was like, of course the job's coming after me. And I stayed there for a little bit, started my own, um, business as we know. Mm. And that brought me to traveling on my own, which eventually landed me from the States to New Zealand. So I currently reside in New Zealand. (laughs) And I'm like my life, you know, and it, it, but it's all, it all goes back to, I wanted to bring that one moment in because that one moment gave me the trust in myself to go, yeah. oh, if I could do that, I can do this. If I could yeah. do that, yeah. I could do this. And I started to flex that muscle. Oh, if I can travel on my own, I can do this. Oh, if I can, you know, seek, seek the, the world by myself, I can do this. And mm-hmm. I came to New Zealand and three days after landing in New Zealand, the second time I met my now husband and the moment I met him, spirit said, father. And I knew that that (laughs) meant the father of my children. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, father, like, he's not my father. And it's like, father, father, father. And I was like, oh, the father of my children. But you didn't tell him right on the first day. (laughs) No, 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 I didn't tell him, I didn't tell him. Probably not the best thing to say on the first date, by the way, you're the father of my children. By the way, you're going to have kids with me, whether or not you know this. Yeah. And actually. Did you tell him later? Two years, two years to the day we met, I gave birth to my first son, well, our first son together, Jack. Mm. And and it moves so quickly, right? You know, I, I see so many women out there that, don't like being single or desperate to meet the person or desperate to create the family. And I always share my story because I'm like, it happened literally so fast. Because you didn't, because you didn't really, that wasn't really what you were going for in that moment. You were going because it was just where it took you and you went with the flow of the universe and you went with what was going on and he just happened to be there. Exactly. Because it was was divinely aligned. He's like, here I am. And then he says to me, oh, we'll wait till this time to start having children. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to have one next month. And then, you know, Jack decided, oh, coming through, coming through, you know, and and he was conceived and having, having my first son, Jack, so easily, so effortlessly, I thought, oh, well, this is going to be the way it is with the kids because that was so easy. And I'm like, wow, getting pregnant so easy. I had, I was really in that moment, blissfully ignorant of any of the yeah. things that could go wrong. Yeah. Um, and between my son, Jack and Liam, I miscarried. And up until that point, that was another really devastating blow for me. And I remember laying in bed and saying like, come on, God, I already went through, yeah. I already came all that stuff. Like, why do I now have to go through this? Why are you doing this to me? And remember I had said earlier too, the reason I stayed in that bulimic 
cycle and addiction cycle was because I was blaming everyone else. I was blaming my mom. And then here I was that pattern. Was God. Back in. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. this is who's doing this to me. You're doing this to me, God, mm-hmm. like why? And then I released that. And the message that came in for me then after, during that miscarriage was my daughter. And she said, listen, mom, my brother's going to come in in a few months and I'll be back. And I thought, all right, cool. And I trusted that. And three months later, I fell pregnant with my son, Liam, my wild child. And he Mm -hmm. came, you know, barreling through in a home birth because we couldn't even make it to the hospital. He just was like, here I am, I'm coming out. Mm -hmm. And so then when I fell pregnant the following year, I thought, this is her, this is her, she's coming in. This is finally her. And I, and I really felt her presence. And I remember we were sitting on my sofa, my midwife called and she said, all right, I have the the gender. And we're like, okay. We're like, it's the girl we know. She told us she was coming. And she's like, it's a boy. And my husband and I look at each other. And like, <laughs> this made me laugh, sorry. <laughs> and my husband, my husband takes the phone. He goes, eh, like, because we, because at that point, um, that child, my son Noah, who was coming through, yeah. was our was his fourth, my third. Okay. And we were like, and that was going to be the last. So we were just like, oh, all boys. And there was a level of grieving of, okay, yeah. well, we're not going to have a girl. Yeah. And also you'd been told, you know, that that was what yes. was going to happen. So yes. your trust, I'm sure your trust would have been, uh, hang on a minute. I've like, trusted everything else. Why yeah. can't I trust this? Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, maybe I was just wrong. And then, you know, that doubt kind of creeps in. Yeah. And you're like, oh, well, maybe I wasn't. And I was just really perplexed and confused. And then I was like, whatever, I'm going to love this boy. Just like I love all the other boys. I'm going to be a boy mom. Mm. Fine. I'll be the queen. That's the way it was meant to be. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, she's still coming though. This is weird. Like, I really Mm. know she's coming through. I know this. And I kind of just kept pushing that knowing to the side and was like, it's I'm just wrong. That's fine. Can't have that many. (laughs) Yeah. Not. And I was like, and Noah's pregnancy was quite, you know, intense with nausea and stuff. So I was like, I'm not doing this again. Mm. And then in May of 2021, on May 18th, I had gone to a regular routine midwife checkup. It was my birth plan. We were actually going to have him in a beautiful home birth. ceremony because it was my last birth so I really wanted to have a home birth have photos taken etc and when I had gone in I was 37 weeks and when she went to check for a regular you know put the Doppler on she couldn't find his heartbeat and at first I was like this doesn't make sense because he's 37 weeks like he's full term I don't understand this doesn't happen And then she started rubbing my leg and my heart just dropped into my stomach. And I'm like, he's gone. But of course, in that moment, they didn't want me to lose my, you know, I don't know if we can curse on this podcast, Susan, but they didn't want me to lose my shit. You know, they didn't, they wanted me to stay composed so they could get me to the hospital. And so they said, um, the machines are old this is probably wrong. Let's go to the hospital. I said, okay. So I went to the hospital and met my husband there. And then they just, and as they put, they were about to put it on. And I said, it's okay. He's passed. Cause I had this Mm. peace wash over me. Like Mm. I had never felt this energy of just deep peace kind of just run through my whole body. And when she put it on, I, I was just like, it's okay. Like he's, he's gone but he's here. And my husband was like losing it, of course. And everyone around me was losing it. And I was just sitting there like in this really eerily tranquil state, you know? And some people were like, oh, you were just in shock and you know, you won't remember anything. And I'm like, yeah, perhaps, but I really believe that he just washed this piece over me in that moment because I remember 
every detail. I remember the paper cup that was handed to me with water. I remember exactly what they were saying to me. I was super present. Conscious and aware. Yeah, I really was. Like, if anything, I feel like it enhanced my presence in that moment. Mm-hmm. And, and so then I went on to have him um, 24 hours later, they had induced me. And it was honestly, you know, for anyone listening in that has gone yeah. through this experience, it's such a um, dichotomy. It was, it was such yes. a secret and beautiful birth. And it was just so sad, you know, like you, there yeah. was so much sorrow but there was also so much joy and there was such an honoring of him. And mm-hmm. it was so beautiful. We had the salt lamps on and mm-hmm. I had, you know, an altar set up and we had beautiful music playing. And so many people that I loved were there supporting the birth and rubbing my back. Like it was just so magical. It actually is my favorite birth of all of my children. Um, and the moment he passed, we had to have several scans. And I said to my um, husband, as we were getting a scan, I said, you know, she's coming. And he's like, what? And I'm like, our daughter is coming. And he, he's like, oh my God. And when I was giving birth, um, as I was in labor, I was just having this conversation with God. And I just said, listen, I will do whatever it is that you want me to next. I will, I will be the vessel to deliver any message and you're going to give me my daughter because I know that she's coming and I'm ready to receive her. And it was like in that moment, that experience of his birth was my next like explosive spiritual awakening. Awakening. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. 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 Gosh, I mean, if you're listening to this, I mean, I'm really in the story with you and the the message with you, but I just want to talk to my listeners as well and just say that, you know, if you're listening to this and and you're going through this, you know, we are going to talk about um, an opportunity uh, shortly um, where you're going to get supported and helped by what you're going through. But just to say that how Marlene is talking about it um, is that, there's always a gift, even though it feels like a very, very sad, traumatic experience. Yeah. There is always a gift in in whatever happens to us. And I know that my nan, who was 97 when she passed, um, mm-hmm. she always said that you never get given anything that you can't handle. Yeah. God never gives you anything you can't handle, whether mm-hmm. you're religious or not. You know, mm-hmm. this is what you're given. Yeah, yeah um and i i'm likening to um, when my dad passed at the beginning of this year it was so interesting because it was sudden pretty sudden i did get to say goodbye to him kind of but it was so peaceful Mm. and i actually did like you i didn't have you have a sense of grief but you but yeah. there's such a peace. And I think it's because I kind of knew that that was all exactly how it was meant to be. Yeah. yeah? And totally. obviously being a medium as well, it helps because he popped in and he was here for a whole week talking to me, <laughs> telling me things that he hadn't told me before and all sorts of information. Yeah. 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 Um, and just standing literally like, you know, where I am now, is you just should stay. So I know <laughs> that spirit are, you know, there with us at all times so if you're listening to this and you've lost a a loved one or a baby or you know whatever um it might be for you or even an animal um they are with you and they are just a veil away and not even that really now totally totally Mm. i couldn't agree with you more i think it's hard for a lot of people and so i really have compassion when people get stuck in the grief or let it Mm. define them or harden them. But something that really supports me is asking myself, well, what would my son want for me? What would Noah Mm. want for me? And I knew the moment he passed, I was like, he didn't die so that I become a hard, bitter, nasty woman. That's not why this is happening. He did this for me, for us for our spiritual evolution to push me forward, to expand me, 
Mm. I'm going to honor him. I'm not going to let this be the moment that- And to help others. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And and to be, you know, we say, you know, I can look at someone's astrology chart. I can see the Chiron aspect of it. And that often is what our spiritual awakening is and how it leads us, the wounded healer, it leads us to help others. Mm. And, you know, wherever it is in someone's chart, it's just so- interesting how it yeah. falls in and we've chosen all of this as much as we have free will but there are significant things i do believe that we have actually chosen yeah so yeah. go on and tell us um about you know after noah so obviously you had that beautiful but very sad experience of yes of letting him go yeah yeah and and mo- and moving forward and learning how to i like to say I I never moved on from that experience. I brought Mm -hmm. it with me and allowed it to transmute me and moved forward. And um, immediately was like, okay, what can I do to support others? Mm -hmm. And started to get get into creation mode and being of service. And that's really been super healing for me as well, you know? Mm creating a foundation in his honor and we're going to create a membership platform for mothers that are tell us, tell us about the foundation in his in his honor yeah so his um the foundation i create is called the noah alexander foundation and it's basically a nonprofit that i created within like 60 days of him passing everyone's like whoa and i was like because i knew like as the moment I knew what what I was supposed to do. And so I've raised money to support other mothers that have been bereaved and gifted them money. We've gifted hospital, um, beautiful care packages that I would have loved to receive, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, I I just gave a bunch. So on his birthday this year, I gave a bunch of care packages. And I said, don't they like feel like hugs that I'm giving? And my husband's like, Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, you know, I've really been living, I feel Mm -hmm. the most expansive and alive Mm -hmm. that I've ever been because I'm so present to my children. And by the way, the daughter did come through. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) I -hmm. felt pregnant uh, about four or five months after, uh, no, I'm sorry, six months after he passed, I felt pregnant and I knew the moment I asked the gender what it was going to be. And they were like a girl and her name's Ava, which means life. And so incredible. Just stop for a second. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just picturing the moment when you did. I'm just picturing the moment because I obviously knew what was coming next. Right. But I'm just picturing the moment that, you know, when you and your husband were there and they were like, well, do you want to know what the sex is? And you're like, well, we know. (laughs) And then actually actually to have it confirmed. Yeah. Must have been just a bliss moment. It was. Yeah. So I actually called my obstetrician's office. I had decided to go with an obstetrician who, by the way, was like this angelic being of a soul. I was just like, oh my God. I remember I you telling him. me about that. Yeah, he was just so yes. divine. And I call him <laughs> and his secretary answers and she tells me, and I was like, you're kidding. And she's like, well, I, I don't really kid around about these results because this is a serious matter. I said, oh, well, I've had three boys. She's like, oh my God. And I was yeah. like, yes. And so then I had to like compose myself and walk yeah. downstairs to tell my mm-hmm. husband. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I have to tell you, um, it's a girl. And he's like, don't do that to me. That's not fair. That's not nice. I'm like, no, it's a girl. And he's like, don't do that to me. Yeah. And then as I kept saying it, you know, he started crying. He's like, oh my God. And and then, you know, every scan that we got, they would yeah. always show me like, these are her lady bits. And I'm like, okay. We and know it's a girl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, Aww. okay, yep. It, she's a girl. She's a girl. And, you know, as my, as my son says, like, hmm, something's different with her. <laughs> Something's or he calls everyone a him. So he's like, something's different with him. I said, yeah, it's a her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, although now when we've got all these um, new names for everything, who knows? <laughs> exactly, exactly. I was thinking that as I was saying, and I was like, well. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow, wow. Mm-hmm. 
So yeah. I know that she's coming to the world and yes. um, hence why we had to reschedule. Um, yes, so she's exactly. coming to the world. And how yeah. old is she now? She will actually be two months on September 8th. Oh. So she came through yeah. July 8th. Mm. And she's just been like, so she's so serene and she's got mm. this real feminine, like soft energy throughout that ripples throughout the house. And my boy, mm. yeah, like just mm. such beautiful. And my boys are like very, you know, dirt, yeah. run, yeah. jump, climb. And yeah. they're just, they'll, I, I say they're like this tumbleweed of like a mess and then they get to her bassinet and they just stop and they dance around it and they'll blow her kisses and they're just super mm -hmm. loving and every morning they're like kissing her and loving up on her it's been very healing for the whole family and i didn't realize how much the passing of my son had impact i knew it created an impact yeah. but it hadn't realized how much it impacted my little guys mm -hmm. and they started articulating how they were nervous about ava not making it yeah, and mommy course. not making it so yeah. her being here has been really mm -hmm. healing and i feel like in a way another awakening yeah yeah well she was talking to you all the time though remember yeah so she was yeah. like oh you know what I'm coming. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. And then I was like, you let you let your brother cut in line. He's like, oh, you know, I had to let him in. He had some work to do. And funnily yeah. enough, with my all of my children come to me in meditations to tell me their names. Mm -hmm. And Jack and Liam have very family connected names and reasoning behind that. Noah's wasn't. It was the first name that had no family connection. Mm -hmm. And he said. I'm God's messenger is what he told me. And I thought, well, that's so beautiful. He's going to grow up and be a messenger mm -hmm. of God and, you know, prophesize or whatever. And well, he is, but yeah. just in spirit. It's not in the way you thought, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, he's yeah. probably made more impact in his 37 weeks of existence mm -hmm. than wow. some people have in 37 years, honestly. I know my daughter, my daughter's called Sarah. She always gets oh. called Sarah, but her name's Sarah, S-A-R-A. Mm. And it's warrior princess. And mm. it means that. And basically that name is nowhere in our family, nowhere to be seen. And it was just something that I felt was really important for her. Yeah. And if you met my daughter, <laughs> you would know why. <laughs> she is so strong, so driven so mm. out there for humanity and she's a force to be reckoned with <laughs> so she um, lives up to the name she chose yeah yeah mm. 100 gorgeous yeah mm -hmm. yeah so you you know you that that's all such a beautiful um experience to tell everybody and mm -hmm. you know there is always an expansion that comes from adversity and we know that but we can't always see it in that moment yeah. So even yeah. she's still little, she's only been here a little while. She's probably still running around you, you know, in the sense of your time and your energy and so on. Yeah. And yet you're still focused on humanity, right? Yeah. Which your collective, which, you know, I hear you. I'm, I'm the same. So your project, can you talk yeah. to everybody about your project? Because I feel like this is, this is one of those projects that, you know, as I look at it in my mind, I see it sort of being carried by angels. And actually before we started, it was, you know, I felt a lot of angelic presence around us. Sometimes I feel galactic, but today I felt angelic. And mm. I really feel like it is carried on the wind. These are the words I'm hearing, carried on the wind with the angels. So tell us about it. Mm, thank you. Yeah, mm. so myself and another angel mother, we call ourselves angel moms. <laughs> How ironic. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So okay. I do and, yeah, okay. I have an Instagram hand, handle called Hey Angel Mama, which ah. is for, you know, anyone that has experienced, it's more geared towards anyone that's experienced pregnancy loss or stillbirth or neonatal yeah. deaths or any, anyone that's a bereaved mother would really find it helpful because the angle that I'm and that my friends that I'm partnering up with 
mm. we come from is really not from this happened to me and now my life is over, but mm. from a space of this gets to be a gift and we get to find the light in this and we get to let yeah. it transmute us and forward us. And yes, there's pain and sorrow and grief, but we're going to allow that to better us and, and reshape mm. us to move forward. And we found her daughter, Amelia passed away five years ago and she had been praying for a woman. Like she'd been praying for me basically to come by her side and help her birth this. And we were connected through a mutual friend and immediately we were like, oh yeah, we got to do this. Mm -hmm. We got to do this. And she's like, you're my person. No one has ever been this early out of this experience, been talking the way you're talking. The only person I know is me. And we just kind of laughed. And so together, what we're creating is this hub, if you will, that's going to start initially in New Zealand and Australia, where we'll have, Mm -hmm. um, and, and the States as well, we'll have tools and resources like meditations and different, um, resources that had supported us right after loss, you know, different Mm -hmm. activities and actions, whether it be meditation or somatic work. And then also, if you're looking to get into being pregnant after the loss, the journey of that, what that looks like, we'll have tools and resources for that. We're going to have recommendations globally of who are the best midwives and obstetricians Mm -hmm to support you if you're having a more sensitive pregnancy, meaning that you've had a loss, like a miscarriage, or you've had a loss, like a stillbirth, or you've Mm -hmm. lost a child Mm -hmm. at any stage of Mm -hmm. life. And you want to have someone that's a little bit more compassionate and sensitive because we found the medical field can be very, you know, fetal demise and this is what's happening. And we're gonna remove the fetus and it's very sterile. And in that experience, women need to be handled with yeah. kitty gloves, you know, and, yeah. and loved up on. And so, so yeah, so we're creating a platform that's kind of like a hub that will essentially be globally. And there's just going to be so much that we're going to do. We also plan to train other moms in the techniques and the things that we do so that it, they can start their own thing in, in many places. Mm-hmm. It sounds absolutely amazing. And do yeah. you have a a website platform from yet or is it just coming out very soon they can get hold of you at hey angel mama is it m-a-m-a yep exactly right it'll be on the show be on the show notes and everything Um, yeah yeah so um i have my handle which is at malene lee butler and then also at um hey angel mama Hmm. either one if you just start following me particularly on instagram is where i'm most active Mm -hmm. then you'll find all the updates because we're literally in the coming weeks about to birth this conceptualize it organize it yeah and put it out there so it could be that you're listening to this on podcast which means it will be out in a couple of weeks from now um if you're listening to this on youtube and you're watching us on video then you know it's before then but if it's coming out on podcast it's probably out now that project so if you can't find Melaine, then you can find my instagram which is just my name susan kennard and i'm going to follow her right now when we get off this call so you know (laughs) if you find you know you know we're we're following each other so if you if you have a problem finding her then find me and you'll find her um yeah yeah, that i mean that sounds like the most incredible project um for people and you know i mean i have a uh you know i have my chambers my galactic healing chambers um and one is for grief and um a lot of people have found that the grief is from today triggered from today so i'm thinking of these people with you know having losses Mm -hmm. with children but actually that grief is something that has been brought in from many timelines many lifetimes and ancestral as well and it might be that part of your journey was to actually heal timelines and timelines of grief from the mothers, 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 you know. Um, and I find that in, in this particular chamber, I have many, as you know, but in this particular grief chamber, that people step into it because they've experienced grief now. It could be an animal, it could be a parent, it could be whatever but it actually clears timelines of grief. So if you're listening to this and you feel that 
you know you've lost a baby or you're you've lost somebody then it this is an opportunity an incredible opportunity to heal mm. you know this grief that you're experiencing now is not just about that grief it is also about all the times that perhaps you couldn't cry all the times that you couldn't allow yourself to be vulnerable that's what the guides are saying all the times that you know as a child you felt loss and grief could be for an animal could be anything yeah and so we have to see the gift in these experiences and i always believe that these spiritual awakenings hence why i created this podcast this show is because of my own spiritual awakening which was losing mm. someone to suicide mm. yeah and then going on to have other spiritual awakenings but that yeah. was an initial one i would say yeah. you know that you know when someone takes their life that's your left as you were left in in moments of your bulimia etc it's like hang on a minute like why did this happen why is this happening to me why did you do this you know and that and that forgiveness and that understanding that we are soul you know having this incredible human experience if we take the jacket off meaning our physical underneath is all knowing and it's coming back to that all knowing part isn't it that says my soul knows exactly why i needed to go down that road and experience that journey but my physical is like well why would that be totally and so it's remembering who we are isn't it totally That's yeah i think something that is so important to me is like that i struggled with after noah passed mm. i didn't choose this i didn't want this yeah and of course like consciously my conscious mind wasn't like, and today let's let this happen. Or I hope that I create this, or I hope I manifest yeah. this. But what it really opened me up and, and allowed me to remember is that, oh, wait, there's a bigger thing going on here. I have an expanded self. I have a higher self. I have a higher purpose that has a, you know, a soul plan for me. Yeah. And, and that's okay. Like, and so it just, it was such an awakening to, there's so much more. And I had known that, but it was just an experiential moment of, oh yeah, yeah. there's a plan for me, you know? And for me, my great grandmother had a son that she lost, very mm -hmm. similar to Noah, that was stillborn and no one in the family knew about it until Noah yeah, was. I've born. heard that before. Yeah, so yeah. many people because it just wasn't spoken about. Yeah. Things weren't spoken about. Exactly. Yeah. So exactly. we are the, the women. Tucked under um, the carpet. Sorry, say that again. I said it was just tucked under the carpet and it was like, mm. that's it, get on with life. Same as PTSD, you know, um, from these experiences, people experience post traumatic. Well, post traumatic was swept under the carpet as well you know no one ever spoke about anything but that's just how it was but now we don't have to be silent and we don't have to um keep all of that within it is time to honor that part isn't it and thank you and the guys are saying to be safe to be vulnerable you know safe to be vulnerable in your experience because being vulnerable in your experience allows you to send that message out to the world so that others know that they're not on their own. No, yeah. And they're not alone on this journey. I think that's the biggest thing too. Mm -hmm. Even in those moments where there's been no one around me after Noah's passing, I'm like, I'm never alone. There's mm -hmm. always a team surrounding you of, mm -hmm. you know, your spiritual team and loved ones. Yeah. And it's funny, you kept saying the angels right after he passed, I experienced and felt like angels, like just surrounding my house and protecting my house. Mm -hmm. And, and so it's no surprise. <laughs> yeah. And, and it was such a strong sense. And I didn't know you called your, your Instagram, Hey, angel mama. So interesting. <laughs> and that, and that, that lovely lady um, found you and called you like the angel, you know, it's so yeah, yeah. interesting because I always trust them and I trust my guidance 100%. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, when I see something and when I feel something, I'm like, wow, that 
such an angelic frequency. And one of the mm. things I, I was thinking about as well is that um, it would be interesting to know what his astrology would be because, you know, on that moment, just me being the scientist with astrology, but looking at his time, looking at the experience, mm. you know, and what actual, because when I look at an angelic frequency in a chart, yeah see the zero degrees and when the zero degrees are there i'm mm -hmm. like wow this person has come in for a very very high frequency mm -hmm. so the earlier the degrees yeah and 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 the anoretic degrees which are latter so maybe yeah. you can bring me over those details <laughs> and well, i can I have definitely. a look at it for you <laughs> yeah, someone look at it um not she had created so i had some, a friend make something for me i had mm. never gotten his astrology chart read I'm, i'll send it over to you for sure yeah and she said something about like the god thumbprint or something like wow. that that was on his astrology based on the nodes or something so i'll, I'll yeah. definitely have you yeah, check it definitely. out but i for sure and it's interesting because prior to conceiving him i felt pregnant two months prior and I remember one of my friends saying, oh, it's probably the frequency that he's about to bring in that you're getting ready to hold mm -hmm. your body's prepping. You're having yeah. this kind of five dimensional pregnancy. And I remember saying like, oh my God. Yeah. Cause like I was no, I was having all the symptoms, everything. Yeah. I felt pregnant. I wasn't even getting my period. It was like, I thought I was pregnant. And it just kept saying negative, negative, negative. And then I was like, all right, universe, I'd like this to manifest in the physical. I'm not going to play so around. I don't have all the symptoms. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, let's get the show on the road. And then I did fall pregnant with him. And I always thought like, you know, now that he's passed and in hindsight, I was like, wow, it was really prepping my body to hold that higher level frequency. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that then he was prepping me for my daughter's frequency that was coming in. Yeah, yeah. And one thing I just feel, I know we've, we've been talking for quite a while now, but I, one of the things I feel like saying is, um, so if you're listening to this and you're wanting to get pregnant or you're wanting to, um, you know, feel that you're ready to bring a soul into the world and maybe you've had miscarriages before, one of the things I feel is really important right now is to keep our, our frequency really clear so you know thinking about what we're putting in our body thinking about um cleansing our liver you don't do that when you're pregnant but if before you're thinking about getting pregnant cleansing your liver thinking about you know your 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 emotional well-being thinking about preparing yourself for things like that although to be honest you know no one's ever prepared for having a baby i've had two and they're teenagers now um <laughs> So one was a beautiful surprise and the other one was um, uh, planned, but <laughs> each were beautiful surprises. Um, yeah. So yeah, but but I actually trained as a naturopath many years before that. And so I think that mm -hmm. my body was being purified and cleansed and ready to, to bring um, these souls in, even though it was sooner yeah. than, than I expected in my conscious mind. Um, yeah. So yeah, if you're listening to this and you're, you're thinking about that, might be worth thinking about cleansing your body, cleansing your emotions, you know, just really being the best version that you can be and your partner as well. You know, it doesn't just fall on the women, it falls on the partner as well. And if you feel that there's something that maybe, you know, for a long time you were taking birth control or for a long time you were you were taking medication mm -hmm. or whatever it might be or anything else you've put into your body that you've been wondering about then this might be a really good time to to do that cleansing mm, yeah totally so well, we did that as well mm. um prior to conceiving any of my children we would always really be intentional about mm. and, and for the most part we're intentional always but even yeah. more honed in on mm. the food the things that we're putting in our mouth, the, the water that we're drinking, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, it, it's important because we're housing um, the frequency mm. of very high frequency beings coming in. Yeah. So these souls coming in now, um, you know, they're very high frequency. 
And so, yeah. you know, if your children, if you're listening and you have children, it's really important for your children to be as clear as they possibly can as well. And, you know, and keep their frequency so that they remember who they truly are and they remember that they are this incredible light out in the world. Yeah. Totally. Mm. Marlene, thank you. I think that's a great closure. You know, yeah. I feel to our beautiful conversation. Um, thank you so much for so um, really sharing your heart with my audience. Mm -hmm. And I've taken a couple of little, you know, acting as if it's just a beautiful, it's probably going to be the title <laughs> of this because <laughs> it feels, it feels so apparent for every part of our life. You know, acting as if brings a frequency of it actually being created in your life. Okay. So thank you so much for being here. I've I've yeah. enjoyed every second of that. It's been beautiful um, to have you here. So thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. If you have a spiritual awakening story that you'd like to share with me and my listeners, I'd love to hear from you. So you can find me at susankennard.co.uk and across all social media at the same name. Thank you so much. And until I see you again, much love.